My name's Leslie Peterson, and I help bloggers turn their modest websites into thriving online enterprises with SEO, email marketing, and a little hard love encouragement to always move forward consistently and with a plan. Hey, bloggers. Today, we're going to talk about the first 10 weeks of starting a brand new blog. So whether you are contemplating starting in the blogging world, getting a blog started and making this a profession, or you're already a blogger and you're interested in expanding the number of blogs that you have in your business, then this is for you. Do you remember when you were in preschool or maybe kindergarten and the teacher always celebrated the first 100 days? It was a great way to, again, celebrate how far you'd come, all the things that you've done. Maybe it was a little bit of math in there too. But we're going to do that over the course of two, maybe three podcasts. We're going to talk about the first 100 days of starting a new blog. But in this episode, I'm going to focus on the first 10 weeks. And the meat of this is going to be in the first three weeks. So if you're interested in starting a new blog, this episode is for you. I have had multiple blogs. Most of the time what happens is after I get going, I realize, geez, I should have just rolled this into the one that I have. And that's what tends to happen. I purchased several blogs, rolled them all into my existing site. I've started a few blogs. One of them I shut down because I was starting with a friend and we moved into a new season of our life and it didn't seem right to keep that one going. We decided to call that one quits and start I started fresh. She went into a whole new field. Over the years of purchasing blogs and rolling them in, starting new blogs, um, rolling them in, or keeping them separate and selling them off, all of those opportunities have given me the benefit of hindsight. And if I were to start a brand new blog today, if I were to stop the podcast, stop the coaching, and just get started on a brand new blog, these are the exact steps that I would take. Okay, here we go. The first thing I would do is spend two days, and I am not kidding, two days honing in on the right niche. Now, a lot of times when we're talking about blogging, we and, and niches, we're talking about, okay, well, which one's most lucrative? I don't want you to think about which one's most lucrative. Certainly money is an important part of this process, but you cannot be successful in blogging anymore in, the, in this world with a lot of AI opportunity unless you are writing about something that you know inside and out. And if you don't know it inside and out, and you want to write, then you've got to be prepared to build a lot of original research. And that includes um, scientific study and lots and lots of interviews. But if you're not willing to do that, and most people who are blogging as a profession aren't going that that route, then you need to focus on something that you know inside and out that you are passionate about. So what do you do in those two days as you're taking all your passions and all your amazing knowledge and deciding which direction to go? Well, the first thing I would do is look at who all the competitors are. How many competitors are, are out there? Uh, what, how long have they been um, working? What's their domain authority? What's their presence in the marketplace? And then I would really understand who their exact customer is and what differentiates them from each other. And I would look to see how can I stand out among them? How can I differentiate myself in such an amazing way that people take notice and they don't go, oh yeah, it's just another blah, blah, blah site. So you've got to really focus on your competitors, understand the differentiators between them, if there are any, but really use that information to understand what your differentiator is going to be. And then identify your exact customer. And don't make the mistake of saying, well, I'm building a travel website for XYZ City, so my customer is somebody who lives there. You've got to be more specific than that now. Times are changing. SEO is different. Blogging is different. 
And being specific, really, really specific, is how you will be successful and how you will make money. So don't discount this. Spend at least two days identifying your niche, differentiating yourself, and defining your customer. I want you to know your competitors inside and out. What are their most popular posts? How long have they been around? How are they making money? Who is their customer? What products do they sell? Where else in the market are they? What are their social media channels look like? Do they have a podcasting episode? Are they on TV? Uh, have they written a book? I want you to know everything about them before you make a decision and move forward. Okay, that's number one, your niche. Now that you've identified a niche, maybe it's a wine blog or a coffee blog or a hyperlocal blog, um, then it's time to define the topic clusters for that blog. I don't want you to confuse building topic clusters with doing keyword research. We're going to talk about keyword research later. The first thing I want you to do is identify and prioritize three, five, no more than 10 right now, topic clusters. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with topic clusters, uh, later this week, I'll be talking more about those. We've got a few episodes in the past, but uh, I'll talk more about those this week. But a topic cluster is, or the reason why you want to build a topic cluster is because you want to establish expertise in this market. You can't be an expert by publishing one post. You become an expert by attacking a topic from every single angle that there is and answering every question imaginable. And you can do that in an overview post and then with a series of deep dive posts. But you want to write your content with topic clusters in mind. And so I'll tell you, um, as I was in the last couple of blogs that I've built, if I'm defining my topic clusters, I pick niches that I know so well that I can sit down and, you know, to use, <laughs> to use my 15 year old's language and just barf out a hundred different topic clusters, um, or, or topic ideas. And it's pretty quickly, you know, maybe in an hour and then I arrange them in clusters. Okay. So I've got these four or five different ideas. Do these all go together? Are these kind of grouped together in a, in a category? Or are these completely different categories? So it's really easy to get a whole bunch out, um, maybe a brain dump if you know your niche really well. But as you, as you write down all those ideas, maybe you're writing down, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 different ideas, try to categorize them into topic clusters. So that's, so if I'm not being clear here, there's two ways to think about it. You can start with what are the categories that I want to cover and then think about, um, the, what I would call the subcategories for each of those as maybe ideas for your content, or you can start with just a blanket list of ideas and then group them into categories. I want to give you a couple examples. Now, I use ChatGPT to come up with these examples because I was trying to come up with examples outside of travel, since I feel like I talk about travel so much since that's my niche. Um, so I use ChatGPT. You can use ChatGPT also, but the thing is, if it's a if topic that you know really well, you probably don't have to. And if you do want to use ChatGPT for this, I would encourage you to do that after you've already done your own brain dump. And then maybe you just want to see what ChatGPT says, or you want to fill in some gaps. Maybe you've built, maybe you did a dump of 20 or 30 ideas. You were able to categorize them into three or five different topic clusters, and you just want to kind of fill in the gaps. So here's some examples. I specifically the prompt that I used for ChatGPT, and just so you know, I have ChatGPT four. Every time I talk on the podcast, I'm using four, and I have predefined um, profile set up because I have a paid account. I have a predefined profile set up that explains what I do for a living and that and the, how I like things really succinct and how the, the components of SEO that are important to me. So all of that is predefined in my setups. So if you run this, it might look a little bit different for you, but here goes. 
I said, I would like topic cluster ideas for a website about wine. And the topics that it gave me were a red wine guide, which might include um, types of red wine grapes and the best wines under $50 and what are the best food pairings for a Cab Sav. And then white wine 101, which might include white wine grapes and how to serve Chardonnay and the best white wines for summer and then wine regions and wine tools and wine and health and wine storage and wine events. So that is examples of topic clusters for wine. I also did another one on gardening and uh, the, the topic clusters it gave me were vegetable gardening, flower gardening, indoor plants, garden tools, organic practices, landscaping, seasonal tips. And then again, as I break that down to the next level for vegetable gardening, how to grow tomatoes in pots, the best fertilizers for root vegetables, crop rotation. So that, for example, those best fertilizers for root vegetables, that might end up being an article. That might end up being a um, a topic for a series of articles. I don't know yet because I'm not doing the keyword research right now. I'm just getting all of my ideas down on paper, making sure they're organized into topics. And again, it's it's also validating the the niche that you're in. I mean, if you can't come up with a hundred topic ideas pretty quickly, I've got two days set set for this, then you might have gone too narrow. Now. I have yet to meet somebody who has gone too micro in their niche, I'm going to be honest, uh, but it's just a great way to validate your niche. I'm going to give you one more example. This is using a hyper-local idea. I said, so give me topic cluster ideas for a hyper, hyper-local website for Dallas, Texas. And I think it's hilarious that ChatGPT came back and told me, hyper-local content is SEO gold. I've not seen it give opinions like that in the past. So that cracked me up. But the ideas, the topic clusters it gave me were the Dallas food scene, local events, a neighborhood guide, outdoor activities, spotlights on local businesses, information about public transport like DART, biking and scooters, and then schools and education. I thought that was really interesting because I hadn't seen hyperlocal ideas take that angle very often. And I really, really love this. And I haven't, I haven't done it, but I'm curious to see if I put a different city in. Would it give me the same information or would it give me a different information? Uh, for the neighborhood guides, for example, it said living uptown, the pros and cons, or the, uh, the art scene in Deep Ellum, or why families love living in Lakewood. I don't know anything about those neighborhoods, if those are even valid. I haven't been to Texas in quite a while and definitely have never lived there. So not sure if those are valid, but those are the things that came out of this chat GPT search. And the question I often get about this is, um, again, how many topic clusters should you have? And I think to start out with, you might have three to five high level topic clusters. I wouldn't start with more than 10 because you're not, that doesn't mean you have 10 articles. It doesn't even mean if you're familiar with topic clusters, you have 10 pillar posts because a topic cluster or a pillar post might, the, the, uh, the supporting post for that might be another pillar post. So you could keep going deeper and deeper and deeper into one topic cluster. But I wouldn't go more, you know, than I definitely wouldn't go more than 10, but really I would try to narrow down to five topic cluster ideas, five high level topic cluster ideas across the top. Each one of those can drive down, you know, as much as, as uh, five or, or six levels deep. Okay. If that's clear as mud, let's move on to the next item. So we've got two days on the niche, two days on the topic cluster. In the next two days, I would spend reviewing themes. The question always comes up, what theme is the is the best? I don't really have a lot of experience experimenting with themes. We use Generate Press on all of our sites um, across the board, and uh, it's been very beneficial for us. Our, our site speed is pretty, pretty zippy. I'm happy with it. It doesn't mean there's not other ones out there that are just as good or maybe even better. I just know that we use Generate Press. So once you decide on what what high level theme you're going to go with, then you need to pick the actual theme that you want to implement on your site. 
I'm giving you two days for this because I want you to look around and make sure you're feeling really comfortable with what you pick and that it um, doesn't require you to have a level of technical skill that you that you don't have. I don't want you to have to go out and hire somebody to help you right now. So pick something that you love that's going to be quick, that has the features necessary for your niche, but don't go overboard from a technical perspective because you have other things to worry about right now. So think about and and decide on the theme that's right for you. And what I would also roll into this is decide on the plugins that you're going to use. Are you going to use WP Rocket? Are you going to use um, Rank Math, which I highly recommend? Um, what are those plugins that you're going to use? Find them all, identify them, and uh, and run a cost analysis on these. So make sure you're not spending um, a lot of money up front because it's not necessary. I think Rank Math is a great one to start out with. I think WP Rocket's a great one to start out with. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what else that might be, but there's the list is small. The list is very, very small when you're just getting started. Okay, so two days to do that. Then you're all prepared for the next day, which is where you are going to purchase WordPress. Do not use the free version of WordPress. Please purchase WordPress. You're going to uh, buy your URL, the perfect URL that will match your niche, but will allow you to grow. And then you're going to uh, implement your, uh, or uh, uh, put up the theme. So you've got to find a host. You've got WordPress installed. You've applied your theme. You've um, set up all of your plugins and you've um, mapped your URL to your new site. That, it probably would take all day, but I think it wouldn't take more than a day because you've done all the planning ahead of time. So now you've got a a blank site, but your site up and running. We're still not writing a post, y'all. We're still not writing a post. Why? Because planning is everything. Planning is everything. And I know a lot of people like to jump in. The first thing they want to do is write a post. And writing content is super important. I mean, that's our bread and butter, right? But you've got to do it right. You've got to do it with a plan. You've got to make sure it's the right market for you. And uh, I can't I can't stress enough how important this planning phase is. So let's move on to the next item, which I, I'm going to give you two days to do. And that is to create a product plan. I'm not asking you to build a product. I'm not asking you to commit to a product. What I want you to do is spend two days deciding how you're going to make money beyond just ads. Because A, we don't know how long it's going to take you to get to the point where you can have ads. And B, honestly, there's so many more ways to make money than just depending on ad revenue. And if you can get the revenue per reader high enough, you might not even need or want ads. So don't be, and I say this with love because I'm on an ad network, but don't be so lazy as to assume or position yourself in such a way that that's the only way you're going to make money. I want you to think about who your affiliate partners could be. I want you to think about what products that you could create for your audience. And this shouldn't be that hard because the first thing you did was identify who your target market is. You looked at the competition to see what they were offering and surely, surely there are gaps. What are the gaps? What are the needs out there that are not being met? What are the things that, you know, most likely those those competitors were people who you went to for information because you have a passion about this topic. What needs were they not meeting for you? What was that thing that made you say in your head, oh, I could do this and I could do it better. Prove it. (laughs) Prove it to us. What products can you offer? 
Is it a $7 printable? Is it a $49 um, course? Is it, uh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. There's so many things. It might not be, I don't want you to get your, get caught up in the fact that it needs to be a tangible product. For some of you, it might be a tangible product. Uh, I know a blogger who has a, a planner that she actually mails out to people. So people, I don't know if they can actually download it or not and print it themselves, but, but her printable is a is a, a notebook that she has printed on demand and mailed to the people who buy it from her. So you might have a tangible product. Maybe you're doing, um, I don't know, maybe you have t-shirts that you're selling or something like that. It doesn't have to be a digital product, but I want you to think about what are, are the products that you could offer. Come up with a good list of three to five. You might be offering all of those at some point. You might be offering just one of those. And then as you develop your site uh, more, as you begin to really fall into who you are going to become, you might have other ideas as people write you uh, or talk to you on social media or your, your newsletter list. You might get more ideas that way. So I don't want you to... Uh, I'm not asking you to, to push yourself into a corner or bo box yourself into only these products, but have a plan in place and open up yourself to the possibility that there are more ways to make money, more passive ways to make money than just ad revenue. Okay, two days on that. And while, you know, here's what I'll, I'll say at the risk of going long on this podcast I want you to talk to some people about your product ideas, get some product validation, but be careful. Be careful how many people that you tell and be careful who you tell. And I'm not saying this because I think somebody's going to steal your idea, but because oftentimes people aren't going to have the super amazing vision that you do. You are building a brand new site, whether it's your first one or your 50th one, that takes bravery, that takes courage, and that's not something that everybody in our life can appreciate, understand, and champion, even when their intentions are fantastic. So definitely do get some validation on those ideas, but just be careful with who you're picking and choosing to share that information with. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is spend about five days building out some of the pieces of your site that are not content related. So use your topic cluster uh, ideas to come up with what your navigation might look like. Um, build out your sidebar. And it might not, it's not going to have any content in it just yet, but you might know that you want the sidebar to include, let's say, the most popular posts. Well, you can do that. You can set that up in your theme without having any content in there yet. So look at your sidebar. Write your about page. Your about page is really important to building your credibility as you're beginning out, beginning especially. So talk to people a little bit about your story about how you gained expertise on the topic that you are covering, how they can get in touch with you, that sort of thing. You're going to want to build a privacy page and you're going to want to think about your home page, what your home page is going to look like. And then that also means looking at the photography. Um, it might mean going and taking new photos. It might be looking through your catalog, uh, um, your inventory of photography and deciding what should be on the home page, what should be on the sidebar, what should be on the about page. So spend about five days uh, putting that together. Now, five days might sound like a lot, and maybe it's not going to take you five page five days. But I want you to really spend time on that about page and that privacy page, and then figuring out what your home page is going to look like. And it might mean doing again some uh, competitive research in that area. And if it doesn't take you five days, that's great because you can spend that extra time on the next item, and that is keyword research. So I want you to take the topic cluster ideas that you came up with 
and put them in your keyword research tool of choice. If you do not have a keyword research tool, you need to get a keyword research tool. Hopefully what you've understood about me so far is that I do not believe in spending money when it's not necessary to spend money. I want you to keep your expenses to a minimum. But if you are serious about being a professional blogger, you cannot and should not go forward without a keyword research tool. Now, you might not buy, start by buying the Cadillac of, of keyword research tools, but you still need one. If I were just starting out and I didn't have income coming in from another blog that would allow me to invest in the second or third one, then I would probably start with something like Key Search or Rank IQ. I really like Rank IQ. Uh, that's probably be the one that I start with, and I'll put a link for you for that for you below. Um, right now, I have several research tools. So I use Rank IQ. I also use SEMrush. I also use SE Ranking. I also use Ahrefs. And while that does sound like a lot, it's because they all are good at something different. And I'd like you to get to the place where you can understand the difference between them and use the ones that you need, but you don't need all those right now and you don't need the expensive ones right now. So let's start you with something like Rank IQ or, uh, or Key Search. So look at your topic clusters and identify which keywords you're going to be targeting for those, um, for those topic clusters. So that's identifying keywords for your pillar posts in those topic clusters and for the supporting content. I want you to come up with at least 25, at least 25. But over three days, I think if you're really serious about this, if you really challenge yourself, you could come up with 50 to 100. I don't want you to come up with 500. Okay, because by the time you get to the point where you're writing your 500th blog post, your whole life's going to be different. So if you decide to come up with, you know, 100, 200, and you're, you're feeling oh, like, okay, yeah, I've got 200 blog posts, then your challenge is going to be to prioritize that list, to cut 100 of them. I don't, I really don't want you to have more than 100. I cannot emphasize enough how things will change as you grow. And you might be saying to me, well, I'm going to write a blog post every day. I hear you. When I started blogging, I wrote a blog post every day for the first one, uh, for the first one year of my blog. That's how I came up with the name 365 Atlanta Traveler because I started by talking to people every day. That was 15 years ago. SEO, or I guess not that, that one was only 12 years ago. SEO was still different then. And if I'm really honest with you, things didn't change for me until I started writing a list of 52 things once a week. And that's when the SEO kicked in. That's when I started getting the attention uh, the, or the blog started getting the attention. So uh, you can't write a good, good post every day and still manage your blog. It can't be done. And may, that might be controversial, but I'm going to say it. it. It can't be done. So don't come up with a more than 100. I think if you come up with 50 to 75, you're kicking some ass. And then prioritize those. So make sure they're, um, that you're putting them under the right topic cluster, that you're identifying which ones are pillar content ideas and which ones are supporting content. Make sure that you don't have support post keywords that don't have a pillar post. Make sure that each pillar post that you uh, write has, I don't know, let's start three to five at least supporting to, uh, articles. You might have more than that. I wouldn't go less than that. I'd figure out what are the other supporting articles that you need or does this all really fall under a different type of pillar post, an existing pillar post somewhere else? But you're basically mapping out the page structure that you're going to build for your site keyword by keyword by keyword. You're looking at the intention of the keyword. And I don't just mean is it commercial or transactional. I mean, what are people really looking for? And is that what you're writing for? Do you have that knowledge to write? Uh, what is the keyword volume? I'm not going to write a, you know, a volume of 
10 unless you're adding a lot of affiliates to that or it's really driving one of your products that you're creating. Are the keywords that you're creating generating the kind of interest and, and uh, target market attention that your product plan is aligned with? Uh, what is the difficulty of those keywords? Because when you're starting out and your domain value or domain authority is zero and all of your keywords are, you know, 99 difficulty on a scale of 100, it's not going to cut it. So look at the volume, look at the intention, look at the difficulty, make priority um, or prioritize your keywords, make decisions about what you cut and what you keep based on those values. If that sounds like a lot of work, then you understand what I'm asking. It is not easy. You cannot start a blogging business by just writing all the things. I, I, I cannot have a blog that is all the things Leslie likes for 100, please, Alex. That doesn't work. The world we live in today is different. You've got to have a plan if you want to be successful. You've got to put the hard work into creating that plan. I know you can do it. This is part of the courage we talked about. This is part of the bravery. It, it's not just brave to start a new site. It's brave to push down that desire to just start writing, to recognize that your ego is driving you to just create, 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 because that's what you are, you're a creator, and to take a step and a breath and plan, to plan judiciously, to plan with an understanding of where you are today to plan knowing that you're going to be a different person, a different blogger a year from now, but to plan nonetheless, just as brave, just as courageous. And then uh, what you'll do the last four days, just make sure again that you're taking all of those keywords that you researched and identifying how they uh, map to your topic cluster and to actually build out, I build a picture of what my topic clusters look like for my site with each one of the keywords mapped to every node in that topic cluster. I used to do it digitally, but I've I found over the years something very fulfilling about Sharpies and huge post-it notes that you can put on your wall. Uh, so that's how I do it these days. I love uh, being able to look at it. I'm actually staring right now at a Sharpie picture of a topic cluster set that we have going on, a new one on my current site. So you'll never stop. You'll never stop building those pictures, be them digitally or with Sharpies the way I do it now. But you want to build the picture. You want to understand what the pillar posts are, what the supporting posts are. Sometimes a supporting post is also a pillar post, so it's going to need support post. Uh, you can go as deep as you want on those topic clusters, but draw a picture, map all the keywords from your keyword research to the topic clusters. That's it. That's the first three weeks. And then for the next seven weeks, what I would do is just write content. If you can, you'll write well, I should say you should target three articles a week for the next seven weeks so that bare minimum, you're at 21 articles at the end of your 10 weeks. Questions I often get are, do I write them all before I put them up? No. As soon as you write your article, you get it posted and get Google looking at it. So write, edit, publish, post. Write, edit, publish, post post at least three articles a week for the next seven weeks and make sure that as you're writing your new content that you're linking between them. What I would probably do is start with a first pillar post. Get that pillar post up. Then I would write all of the supporting posts for that pillar post and once they're all up I would go back to the pillar post and I would link out to all of those supporting articles that I just wrote and once that's done I'd move to the next pillar post. So I'd write my content, not by which one is the lowest difficulty keyword or the highest volume keyword, but I would write, it, write them topic cluster by topic cluster by topic cluster. That is your first 10 weeks of building a blog. 
and what we'll talk about in the next podcast or two. I haven't decided how we're going to break it up uh, is how you would finish off that first 100 days, just like kindergarten. So I hope that helped you. I hope that gave you some clarity of mind as you're deciding how to build your first or your next blog post or a blog site. Um, And I hope that I hit you over the head a little bit with how important the planning process is, how critical it is to not just jump in by writing, but jump in by planning. And listen, friend, I understand, I know firsthand how much courage it takes to start, how hard it is to be new at something new. Even though I've been blogging forever, I would not consider myself um, uh, as a beginner blogger. Even when I start a new blog, there's that fear, that cringe factor at starting something new. But you've got this. I'm going to tell you something. You've got a beautiful angle on a topic that you're passionate about and the world needs to hear it. The world needs to hear your perspective, your perspective on that topic. I don't care what the topic is. The world needs you, so don't put it off any longer.